Paul. Thanks very much for agreeing to do the intro. You're sitting today in your office in London at Facebook, I believe? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so I joined Facebook sort of two, two and a half years ago. Um, I started uh, working on the privacy team. Um, and I'm now on a project called uh, Facebook at Work. So I spent about 18 months uh, in the office in California, um, and then they needed to sort of build up the research team in London, so that was a good good time to move as well. You came through the computer science stream. Was this the MEng or the BSc? Yeah, so MEng, computer science, uh, into the PhD. Yeah. Four years for your MEng, and then another three for the doctorate, of which you had a couple of internships during that period as well. Yeah, so during the sort of three or four years in the PhD, I spent, I think, a year in total um, all at Microsoft Research. So I think three uh, with different teams in Redmond um, and then one in, in Cambridge in the UK as well. Fantastic. So your PhD gave you a mix of academic research as well as industry experience. Yeah, that was, that was a great mix. And Microsoft Research, you know, is a great place to do that as well. It's like a little university w within an industry almost. Um, so that was great. You're not uh, necessarily missing making an income during those years because you had a full scholarship and, uh, you know, you didn't, you didn't really, I would assume, you didn't really have to worry about whether or not you were doing something because you were kind of taken care of to have that space. Is that fair or was it horribly stressful every month? No, that's exactly right. I mean, um, the full scholarship absolutely helped. Um, you know, it's great to work during summers or whatever it is as well. And those tend to be, you know, directly relevant sort of internships in some cases. That's an important thing to note is you got paid for the internships as well. So absolutely. So you're getting paid on top of the PhD. A little yeah. bit about <laughs> what you saw the PhD as and you know, what, what drew you to it in the first place? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I'd love to say that, you know, it was like this lifelong passion for like knowledge and learning that, that drew me to it. But really it was two things. And I think one was uh, that I didn't really want a real job or I didn't know what I wanted to do at that point. Um, but I think the second was this like fascination with being able to kind of ask a question that no one really knew an answer to um, and explore it, you know, whether that was writing code, observing behavior, interviewing people. Um, and, you know, at the end of those three or four, whatever it is, years, you know, you're going to be the world expert in that one thing. And, and that's pretty cool. Um, what are you the world expert in, Paul? <laughs> Uh, so you could argue that um, I have some background in um, like identity and audience on social media, like in and out of the workplace. Absolutely a mix of disciplines, right? Um, the, the computer science angle there was uh, that I did all of the like design and the coding and like the scraping of websites and like um, getting all of that data in somewhere. Um, and then also there was a kind of physical design component to it as well of you know hacking together these like little photo frames and like putting them together and like with Microsoft Research you helped a lot um, you know getting these like touch screens and making those touch screens work and everything else so that was kind of the computer science angle um, and then sort of as I mentioned as well you know there's this like social psychology and identity and, and workplace and like memory stuff as well around okay well what period of your life is, you know, do you reminisce about the most or kind of what content is going to be most meaningful to you? Um, you were also very much part of a, a group of PhD students who were at different years in their program and so you were contributing a lot in the early days with other people collaborating a lot. Yeah, so that was great. It was great to work with a bunch of different people. Um, um, I guess that's the other thing as well, right? It isn't Everything about the PhD and the work itself and the products you do is great, but then it's also the community. So, you know, through hopefully, you know, your lab and everything else, that's obviously the immediate stuff, but then through attending conferences and presenting and interning and reviewing, you know, you get to work and, and hopefully collaborate. Back to kind of this idea of that network, right? You know, these are like super smart and friendly people. Um, you know, again, like you mentioned, like one of the perks of academia is like traveling from conferences. Um, you know, a lot of my good friends like around the world are now from conferences. You know, I spent... And, you know, I spent time, as I was writing out the PhD, I just went and sat in, like, Boston, you know, through, like, people you knew and through people I knew at conferences, just sat at MIT and wrote my thesis for a little while, which then probably helped me kind of connect with some of the work that was happening at Carnegie Mellon and get that postdoc. 
um, and again, kind of through conference, kind of just conversations, you know, just running into people and talking to them and being aware of each other's work and sort of what you're doing, again, uh, you know, helped me sort of talk to people at Facebook um, and then get the job at Facebook. Uh, kind of a fair uh, characterization of what you were looking to the PhD to do, to give you some space to just figure yourself out and get some more knowledge than what you had coming out as an undergrad? Yeah, absolutely. I think it you know gives you a bit of time just to reflect about what you're interested in or what you're good at or what you want to focus on. Um, it helps you develop you know a range of skills, right? Uh, you know, at the end of the PhD, you have this great ability to to problem solve, to like get to the core of a problem and sort of ask fundamental questions about it, uh, to reason through approaches and solutions, and then you know the papers and the presentations you know can help you communicate kind of often nuanced things in a very clear and, and concise manner. And would you say that uh, the key question is, it was worth it in terms of the kind of opportunities and income that you have that you don't have to look back on those years and go, gosh, I, I sure missed a lot of money that I could have had if I had just figured out what to do sooner. Um. So would I say that, you know, it was worth it? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that there are definitely people here who don't have PhDs um, and, you know, they contribute just as much as anyone else. Um, but having a PhD does tend to mean that you go in at a slightly more senior level. Um, you have that ability to kind of draw in those different sort of disciplines and, you know, build on sort of theory as well as just sort of doing the, the other just like day-to-day -day sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, there's no doubt that you spend a few years, you know, um, not in industry or not earning money in this case. Um, but I think that the, the skills and the network um, and everything else that you learn during that time and just that time as well to focus on something um, is, yeah, I wouldn't have given it up. Is it, is it for me? That's a good question. I think if you have especially taken some of the sort of more, you know, researchy courses um, towards, you know, that sort of third or, or maybe fourth year if you're doing that, um, you're interested in some of those questions, you're interested in sort of thinking deeper about one problem over time or addressing it from a few different angles. If you're reading other papers from any discipline really um, and interested in them, um, I think it's a great time. And if you think we want to do something you know, if you don't want to just leave and go into, I don't know, some sort of programming job straight away, maybe, um, this allows you to kind of open that up a little bit more as well. Because you're certainly not doing just programming, are you? Yeah. Absolutely not. No, I actually do very little programming now. Uh, and engineers would shout at me if I did too much as well, so it's <laughs> probably for the best. Well, th thank you very much. And I, I think that's unless there's something else you'd like to add. Uh, no, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for your time.